Amen. Uh, today I want to start a series and um, we'll do part one today and i do part two in two weeks, two Sundays from now. The series I'm starting today is also the title of one of my books. We're looking at developing a reading culture. Developing a reading culture. Developing a reading culture. Now, so it's going to be another amazing series because one of the things we try to do as a church is to come up with series so that we can go line upon line, precept upon precept because there are many things we need to share and if we just rush it, we'll not be able to get all that needs to be gotten. So sometimes we may have to do part one and do part two later on. So make sure you have your notes intact. For instance, a while back, uh, Pastor Abraham did part one of entrepreneurship and he couldn't finish. But there are many things that still need to be said. So make sure you note all that so that when we start a series and we can't take it one um, after the other, you'll still be able to remember that. Now, this particular service is called Success Business and Leadership Service. And the purpose of this service is to equip you for all-round success. We want you to be able to succeed in your business, in your career, in leadership, and in the different spheres of influence that God has made available to you. And in order for you to become successful and to become great, one of the secrets of greatness is what we are looking at today, which is developing a reading culture. Because as we come to realize, you'll find out that readers are leaders. Great people are people that have good and accurate and timely information available to them, and they use those informations to make progress in life. Uh, let's begin from Daniel chapter 9, verse number 2 and see scriptural background for some of the things we're going to be saying. In Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 2, the Bible says, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that it will accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. So Daniel was in Babylon as part of those that were held captive. And before they went into captivity, God has spoken through a prophet by the name of Jeremiah. And God said to Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, my people are going to go into bondage for 70 years, and after 70 years, I'm going to bring them out. Now, 70 years had come and gone, and nobody knew that they were supposed to be free. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And then all of a sudden, this wonderful man by the name of Daniel began to read. What if he didn't read? He began to read. And by reading, he found, I said, come on, we're supposed to have been here. Are we here? Why are we still here? That knowledge he encountered by the books he read turned things around and then they began to pray and to seek God for their deliverance and the deliverance came. Many times, we don't understand the operations of the prophetic. And that's why it's very, very important for us to study different concepts about the kingdom so that we'll be able to understand it. And guess what? Once you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you, as a Christian, do everything you can to develop your intimacy with the Spirit of God so that the Spirit of God can be able to help you get understanding part time. Because people don't understand the prophetic. When God brings a prophetic word to you, sometimes, just like you have the Bible, you have Genesis, you have Exodus, and you have Matthew, you have Mark, you have Revelation and all those stuff. Now, you can be in the genesis of your life, and God brings a revelation that is in the Exodus of your life. And that prophetic word is the next phase, because after Genesis, Exodus. But you can be the genesis of your life and God will bring a prophetic word that is in the Matthew of your life. And it may look like a lie because you are still in your Old Testament. It may look like it's never going to happen because you are still in your genesis. But if you understand the way God works, you will find out that he already knows the end from the beginning. So sometimes the word that God gives to you may not make sense to you, but because you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you, you go back to that Spirit and say, God, what is this? How does this relate? I'll give you two examples. 
In one of the services we had here, my son gave a prophetic word to a man and gave him a prophetic word. I'm going to give you two in-house examples. And told him that he saw him in building. And the guy was a banker. And he has lost his job. The guy was a banker. He lost his job. So he said he saw him in something about building. I don't know whether construction. You know, just So the guy was confused. So he said he wanted to see me. So he said, sir, that the prophet said that he saw me in building. That doesn't mean I should go into building business and construction. I said, that's not what it means. Hello? I said, he has said he saw you in building. There are different dimensions to building. You are a Christian. Do you have desire to go into construction? He said, no. Do you have desire to be a builder? He said, no. I said, so forget it. Go to God and say, God, what is the interpretation of this for my life? And then, with time, God will avail. Guess what? A few months later, he got a job in Dangote Cement. Somebody that has been out of job for a very long time. Got a job. What do they use cement to do? Hello? So when the prophet said, I saw you in construction, he will only see what he saw. He can't add to what he didn't see. Do you understand now? But are you not in construction now? You are in construction by being in a company that produces cement. Do you understand? You may even be there as an accountant. You are still in construction. Do you understand? So he saw it on. He gave a prophetic word to one of our pastors. He called them out and he said that they will believe in God for a child. And he said that he saw them with twins. So he saw twins. And we all believe in God. And then they told me, they said, ah, Pastor, this one that this man said he saw twins, we have already started the adoption process. So, that we are doing adoption, and but it's been on and on. But with us. He said, so what do we do? I said, ah, <laughs> you continue to believe God. Should we stop the adoption process? I said, no. Just continue whatever you are doing. And just believe God. Guess what? When they were caught on from the adoption agency, almost over a year later, they kept, if you know about that, it takes a while. So they called them from the adoption agency. They say, ah, that please, we have children now, but the problem is you people ask for one. It's twins that we have. Do you want twins? <laughs> now they have twins. Do you understand? So the prophetic, you need understanding. So when the prophetic word came through Jeremiah, Jeremiah was not here to help them to understand that 70 years has come and gone. But it was by reading books. So sometimes, there are many dimensions to God that you are still trying to grapple with. God, why is this happening? God, how am I going to do this? God, then by the time you now read, you now realize that, wow, no wonder, oh, so this person too went through this, oh, this person too went through that. And then you begin to realize that, oh, okay, it's part of the journey, oh, it's part of the process. So reading is very, very important. So now our topic is developing a reading culture. Now I want us to focus on that word developing. You see, developing, as stated in the title, means that it is not automatic. It means that it is something you must consciously, deliberately, and intentionally develop. And it means that you have to be disciplined to develop it. So you don't just wake up one day and become an avid reader. The challenge with many of us is religion has messed up our mind so we become irresponsible in our lifestyle thinking that God will do it. God is in control. The spirit of God will do it. God can give you money to buy a book. He can't read the book for you. God can give you money to have food to eat, but he cannot feed you. Hello? So, you need to understand that you are supposed to be responsible if you are going to have success and greatness in life. There are things that nobody can do for you. Oh, I love you, baby. Oh, could you, could you, could you, could you, could you. I love you, baby. I can love you and cook for you. Oh, I love you, baby. Could you, could you, could you, could you. I love you, baby. I can love you and serve you the food. Oh, I love you, baby. I can love you and feed you. Will I swallow it for you? Hello? Will I digest it for you? I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. If you need to poop, will I poop on your behalf? You go to the toilet by yourself. So, no matter what, 
In this world, you must take responsibility. So this reading culture thing is something you must consciously tell yourself. I want to be great. I want to know more today than I know yesterday. I want to learn, unlearn, and relearn. I want to continue to develop myself. I don't want to expire. So let's look at five vital facts that we need to note and then six reasons why you need to develop a reading culture. And then in part two, we look at seven things that you need to do to help you in that. So number one, Five vital facts to note. Number one, where you will be in the next five years will be determined by the books you read, information, and the friends you keep, association. That's the word of a wise man. He said, where you will be in five years is a result of two things. The books you read and the friends you keep. The books you read talk about information. The friends you keep talk about association. So it means that your information and your association determines your destination. Your information and your association determines your destination. So if you are not informed, you will be deformed. If you are not inspired, you will expire. If you are not updated, you will be outdated. If you are not in the know, you cannot be in the flow. What you know is what determines how far you go. Information is the key to transformation. Those who know rule over those who do not know. So where you'll be in five years is what will be determined by the books you read and the friends you keep. So it therefore means if you don't like where you are today, change your friends and change your information. If you look at your life today and you don't like the state of your life, check your friends, check your association, check the information you have been receiving. If the information you have been receiving is information of fear, information of doubt, information of you are a nobody, that will become the software that runs your life. Hello? I got an email during the week. I was angry. I had to believe God. Not to reply with anger. And what was the email? Please, sir, I need your advice. I've been trusting God for your husband. And one of my colleagues... I started showing interest in the middle of last year. So early this year, he proposed and he took me to his parents. And when we went to his parents, the parents are pastors. They have their own church and they prayed for me. They said, I have spirit husband. But in order to be delivered from the spirit husband, I have to buy some animals. We need to do some sacrifice and go to the forest. Hello? You see the kind of things I face? <laughs> and go to the forest. And my people are against it. Oh, and I don't know. I'm confused now. Because the guy is now begging me that if I love him, I should do what his parents are saying so that we can get married. And sir, he's the only one that has loved me. Oh, nobody. Has, so I don't want to miss this opportunity. What do you think? Should I go? Or should I not go? Someone sent that to a pastor. Why wouldn't you send it to a pastor? When is a pastor that is telling you to come to the forest? You see, what would they say? Hello? Now, question. What software, what information has that person been consuming that makes her think that marriage is so full of desperation that you go and do that? If you're already you entering... Now, and, and now, by the time I reply that, I say, all those sacrifices you are going to do yourself is what will bring you into the spirit husband that they want to introduce you to. <laughs> I say, if you had common sense... And you went to a place that is called a church. And a pastor and his wife is telling you that the solution to the spirit's wife in your life is not for them to do deliverance. It's not for them, it's for them to carry you to a wilderness and a forest with animal. Is that a church? Are you that desperate? So the information, the association. There are many good things that will have entered your life, but for the people you are moving with. There are many bad things that will have happened to you, but for the people you are moving with. Some people have helped you out of... Do you know there are many things that people talk about? To us, it's like, eh, that happens. Because we are not aware we are in church. Hello? We are so lost in church and God that we don't even know many things that are happening that people are facing. Number two. 
one of the most amazing insults that has been unfortunately validated by our action states if you want to hide anything from a black man hide it in a book if you want to hide anything from a black man hide it in a book why because they will never read now unfortunately that has become true in the life of many people even though it's an insult why because black people hardly read I travel around different parts of the country, different parts of the nation, the continent. And when you are in the airport, when you are in the plane, when you are all over, you look all around. People don't have books in their hand. But look around, you see white people, whether it's a novolo, whether it's a, they will have one thing, they are reading. But what are Africans doing? They are on social media. Hello? Say, so if you want to hide anything from a black man, hide this in a book. Do you know that every problem in life already has a solution before the problem came? And many of the solutions you are looking for is locked up in a book somewhere, in a bookstore somewhere, in a website somewhere, or in your shelf at home. But you have never bothered to read this. Hello? Why? Because people don't appreciate what they have until they lose it. We just released the two books from the Soul Project, and in the last two weeks, I've gotten about three emails already of testimonials from the book. And when I got the first testimony, I, I quickly check the date. I said, ah, because we're in the midst of conference, so, I didn't, so when I checked my email on Monday, I said, ah, today is six now, so you mean somebody has bought the book in less than one week, you don't read and finish, you don't they testify, ah, wow <laughs> you know even though i'm like wow within one week somebody has bought the book i've read he's already testifying and some people have not bought some people will never buy <laughs> and that i'm like wow this god you are just too much joke. so does it mean that if this book didn't come out this person would not have gotten this information wow wow proverbs 23 23 says buy the truth and sell it not buy the truth and do what and sell it not Message translation says, buy truth. Don't sell it for love or money. Buy truth. Don't sell it for love or money. Buy wisdom. Buy education. Buy insights. So when you are buying books, this is what you are buying. Hello? You are buying wisdom. You are buying truth. You are buying education. You are buying insights. There are many dimensions of growth, expansion, and transformation that has happened in my life, in this ministry, that are traceable to books I read and books we read. Traceable to books I read and books we read. I can tell you stories upon stories upon stories. We did a series early in the year on the seven habits of highly effective people, one of the most amazing books that I read and I read almost every five, five. Even my own book, School of Money, I read it every two, two years. I read it last year. I'm going to read it again next year. Hello. And you'll be amazed every time you read it, you get something new. Can't you see that it's the same Bible we have been reading for thousands of years? Every time you go, we do Bible in one year, every time I say, ah, but why didn't I see this one last year? Because they are new every morning. Every time you go to the book, it's the same book, but you are not the same person. It's the same book, you are not on the same level. In the same book, you are not on the same experience. So what you read last year that didn't resonate, now it will resonate. If you read it as a single person, you will not think of parenting when you are reading it. Because you are still a single person. But if you now go back to the same book five years later, and you, now, you are now married with a child, you will see something there about parenting that you didn't see when you were single. That is why you don't ever think that you know. Because the day you stop learning, you start dying. Number three, readers are leaders. Readers are what? Are leaders. And if you see any great and successful leader in any field or aspect of life, they are found to be people who read. Any leader you see, they are readers. People think that you become great. You know when they say presidential library. People think when you become very great, you now go and open a library. But let me tell you something. You have a library so that you can become great. 
It is as you begin to buy one book, two books, three books, and you begin to store it in your, on the floor in your small room. After a while, you put it in a carton. After a while, you have one small shelf. After a while, before you do it, that's how you build the library. And as you are building the library, you are building your life. You are building greatness. There are books I bought 30 years ago, 28 years ago, 5 naira, 2 naira, 6 naira, 11 naira, 21 naira. Some of those books are no more in existence. Luke 4, 16, let's see. One of the leaders that reads, his name is Jesus. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, somebody say custom. That means it's, a, it's, a, it's an habit, it's a tradition, it's something he does. It's not a one of, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Why? Because in their own days there was no book. All the books were in parchments. So he had, it's like going to the library. He was going to the temple, say, let me go and read, let me go and read. He left his house. He was intentional. This is Jesus. So, and now the library has come to you on your mobile phone. The library has come to you online. Look at message translation. He came to Nazareth where he had been reared. As he always did on the Sabbath, he went to the meeting place when he stood up to read. So that means he had a routine. Sabbath, you just go here. Okay, every Sabbath, I'm going to read. Every Sabbath, I'm going to read. It's like saying, I'm going to the library once every week. I'm going to read the book once every week. Look at the New Living Translation. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. Let's look at another reader, a great leader by the name of Paul. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. From the message translation, it said, Being the winter, bring the winter coat I left in trust. He was writing to Timothy, so he was telling him, so bring the winter coat I left in trust with car. Also, the books and parchment notebooks. So he said, please, when you are coming, please, don't forget my books, don't forget my journals, my notebooks. These are great men. And now we see the things that they were doing in secret that was making them to shine in the open. How was he able to write the entire New Testament? Two thirds of the New Testament was written by Apostle Paul. How was he able to write? First week of March, when I was doing my monthly you know, spiritual exercise, and God spoke to me, I said, Ah, me, ah, we have less than six, that's about 60 days. I wrote those two books in less than one week. In less than one week, those two books were written. Hello? Why am I able to write it in less than one week? Because of the information overload. Years of, you know, you just pull this together, pull it together, tie this, pull this from this place. Why? Because the knowledge is already there. Out of the abundance of the art, then you begin to download. Look at the amplified version. When you come, bring the cloak, talking about his coat, that I left in trust with couples. Also books, the books, especially the parchment. That's my notebook, where I jotted some revelation, where I noted some insight. I am a reader. I've told you before, over and over again, I read an average of one book every week, and I've done that for about 28 years now. It's high level of discipline. High level. You can never see me without a book. Everybody knows. If you enter my car now, you see all manner of CDs. If I open this folder for you, there are over 380 something e-books on this. Books. Read and unread. I also have subscription to the executive summary. Every best-selling book that comes out in this world, once the book is a best-selling book, it is summarized into eight pages. It's called executive summary. That's $1,400 per annum. So I get that. So if it's 10 best-selling book that comes out in one month, we get it in that one month. So every best-selling book, eight pages, bah, for $1,400 every year. Hello? So you think, oh, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the information that is streaming life in this brain. Hello? So 
Are you a leader? It's time to come out of this local, you know, myopic shallow The level we are going to in this world now, you need a global capacity. And that capacity cannot come with ignorance. I'm telling you. All the prayer you are praying, are you prepared for that prayer? When God answer, can you undo it? Can you? Do you know what it means to undo some of the dimensions of what you are asking for? Number four. Reading is to your mind what exercise is to your body. Reading is to your mind what exercise is to your body. A little over a year ago, November 2017, I started going to the gym. I celebrated my one year in November. So I do at least, at least, worst case, you know, once every week. Averagely twice a week, apart from the one I do at home. So now, it was a struggle when I started. Struggle. Even the treadmill, I would just be shaking like this. They, say, they were laughing at me. My wife would remind me, are you going? But now, I go by myself. When I'm going to a hotel now, I'm asking, do they have a gym in that hotel? Why? It's no more, I now love it. I enjoy it now. I have entered that realm. Why? After consistency. So now, I watch what I eat. I do this. So every time, I have all kinds of exercise I can even do in my room. Things that they have been teaching us since. Do you understand? That we went to church. But I'm basically, we say, do this, do that. I say, this people won't kill us. One time, there's one of our brother, Tony Ebo. I say, you can carry chair, stay on the chair. You can do like this. All those, I say, this people go keep us now by myself, by myself. I'm doing all those things. Hello? So, I don't even need to have a gym. I can tell you now things you can do just by standing, things you can do without any equipment, by yourself, by yourself. Why? Develop. So, reading is to your mind. What exercise is to your body? So, your mind needs to stretch. It needs to stretch. You know, when you come into this world, they start by teaching you A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. But after A, B, C, they now tell you B, O, Y, boy. G, I, R, L, girl. But after a while, note, all the words that has been, is, and will ever be is from the 26 letters of the alphabet. But when you are at a level, you can't comprehend it. You can do A to Z, but you don't know how to spell boy. But at a point, you can spell boy and girl, but you cannot spell catastrophe. Hello? You can now say, okay, I can spell catastrophe, but you cannot spell maleopathy. Why? Because it's the same A to Z, but now you are developed. So your physical and mental labor is very, very key. So the same way you do, you have to mentally labor this head. Because let me tell you something. You want to be great. There is a realm you get to. You are now a millionaire, you are a billionaire. You cannot sleep more than three hours a day. Because you have having meeting globally. You have seven hours board meeting with the African company. And then in the middle of the night, you are talking to the Australian company for another two hours. And then you also have to do a meeting with Singapore. All within 24 hours. So when will you now have time to do eight hours sleep? And what is it? One is it two? <laughs> no, sincerely. The level of greatness and prayer you are praying for, your fasting is greater than your development. None of you, you have over fasted, over prayed, under grow, under develop. So all the things you are praying for, your prayer is stored, your fasting is stored, waiting for you to grow up, to qualify for what your prayer has downloaded. The head is the headquarters. Hello? This is the headquarters. I was not bold when I started Cavalio. Go and see my picture. You see my father, you see my wife. Have you seen any bothered person there? It's when your head begins to function. <laughs> and you carry load and the headquarter is moving. It's like an engine. Have you ever slept and you didn't sleep? You woke up tired. <laughs> because your brain is still working even though you are asleep. <laughs> you cannot afford to have an analog mind in a digital world. So reading is what to your mind, what exercise is to your body. 
So begin to read. Begin to develop. Your career, you need to read. Your business, you need to read. Your ministry, everything about your life, you need to continue to develop yourself because information is moving very fast. By the time you graduate from university, everything you learn, 75% of them has become useless. The day you graduate. By the time you finish your service. The information you are running with now, some of them will expire every six months. So if you are not reading consistently, all your business plan and all your prayer point and all your desire is on an expired policy. And number five. Reading book commensurate to your age in any area you wish to be successful in is a secret weapon. Reading books commensurate to your age in any area you wish to be successful in is a secret weapon. What do I mean by that? If you want to be successful in a relationship and you are 27 years old, you need to read at least 27 books on relationship to be successful in relationship. If you want to be successful in finances and you are 35 years old, you need to read at least 35 books on finances to be successful. So whatever your age is, if you want to be successful in anything in life, think of how old you are and buy the number of books that is equal to your age in that area and begin to read. By the time you finish all those books, you will have been transformed. It will be difficult for you to remain the same. I'm telling you. It will be difficult. In 1998, when I became frustrated about my finances and I cried out to God, say, God, I'm tired. God born again as a teenager, became a pastor at the age of 21, serving God. And this money thing was, I said, God, we think. Nah, now nah, so it hard. When I cried out to God, eight months, I began to read. I read and read and read every readable. Every readable on wealth creation. Every readable. I went and bought everything I can buy on finances. Within those eight months, the result is what we are seeing. Everything about my inside changed completely. I just knew that this thing, we must crack it. Hello? In the last two years, or three years, I have gotten more inv invitation than I have ever gotten. People are just inviting me from all over the world. This week alone, I was in Abuja. From Abuja, went to Benue, Makodi. I came back yesterday night from Benue. Five hours from Benue to Abuja airport. Tomorrow morning, first flight, I'm off. Benin, Monday to Thursday, come back on Friday and join another airline straight to Uyo. The next week that follow, Ghana, everywhere, invitation. Why? This same information that I've gathered. Hello? Why? Because people are poor, people are frustrated, people are confused. And it is the information that I have gathered and I continue to gather that is making me sought after. Hello? Sought after. All expenses paid, you go and you return. Loaded. All expenses paid, you go and you return. Loaded. Why? Because you have developed yourself to have something to say. If there's anything I've learned in the last few years, it is the fact that this thing works. Because it is in the midst of crisis you will know whether it works. If I didn't practice what I was preaching, I would not be here today. What is keeping me today is multiple streams of income. So if this one is not working, this one is working. If this one is not working, everything cannot go down at the same time. Hello? So how old are you? In what area do you want to be successful? Now, we can carry this thing to spiritual. If you want to become a healer, all this healing and anointing, healing and anointing, go and buy, if you are 40 years old, go and buy 40 books on healing. All the healing books you can see in any bookshop and read it between now and December. You will be laying hands on people. Even walking around, people will just be healing. healing. I'm telling you, just because you are loaded with knowledge, the word becomes flesh, your word carries weight. And once you say it, things just happen. There are people that say in Jesus' name, nothing happen. Some of them say in Jesus' name, something happen. It's not because the name is not powerful, it's because you, you are not powerful. Because you are speaking from mind. Somebody else is speaking from spirit. Oti Kisibe, you know, something is heavy inside. It's talking from a point of revelation, not religion. So six reasons why you need to develop a reading culture. Let's run, see how far we can go in this. 
Number one is the pathway to greatness. Number one is the pathway to greatness. So, you want to be great? Become a reader. Start reading. Start reading. This series itself, there is a little small pamphlet. I don't know if they have it there. You can just bring it for me. Small pamphlet, like maybe 200 naira. You can start with that one. Developing a reading culture. Just to even internalize all these things. You can start with mini book. Because it's the path to greatness. A wise man once said, if I have achieved anything substantial in life, it's because I have stood on the shoulders of others. If I have achieved anything substantial in life, it's because I have stood on the shoulders of others. So, when you read the books of great people, you are standing on their shoulder to learn about their life, their mistakes, all the things they have gone through. I'm reading a book right now, Leadership by John Maxwell. It's the latest book. I'm reading it. And he's in his 70s now, and he's you know, bringing back things he has learned, and then bringing it to now that I'm older, and saying all kinds of things. And one of the things, when I read it yesterday at the lounge, and I'm like, wow! <laughs> Greatness is... <laughs> there is story there, oh. And he was talking about one of the greatest challenges he ever had. How that when he was growing up, the first church, bah, easy. Second church, bam, easy. So by the time he got to the top church, very massive church, he had done two building projects already, and this one was the next building project. So he thought, oh, I've done it before. I know it's going to be different, but at least. So they, they did the design, they did everything that they are going to raise offering, and the plan was that they are going to spend 25 million. So he said, the plan was that this building will be completed within four years, and then they will spend 25 million dollars. He said, but that was the greatest challenge of his life. They were supposed to buy 80 acres. By the time they bought the land, 1.8 million dollars, they measured the land. It was 110 acres. 30 acres more than their plan. So they say a breakthrough. But all of a sudden, government came and said there is a particular plant that is growing on a part of this land. That plant is the only one in the whole of America. It's an endangered species. So you cannot uproot it. So almost a lot of acreage. Then after they did design, after they said, no, 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 we discovered that there is a water right that if you build here now, there is a water that is supposed to be coming. You can't pass this place again. It has to go this So you have to pay for water rights. Then they did that. Then the city came and said, now that you are here, because of the crowd you are going to be bringing here, we have to expand this road because of you. You have to come and pay part of the road consortium. Cut a long story short. He was a pastor in that church for the next 10 years. The building was not started nor completed. He said, he handed over the ministry to somebody else. That one too did another three years. He said, 13 years later, they finished the first part of the church. So what was supposed to take four years took 13 years. He never saw it happen. He said, when the man took over and did the first part, he spent another 10 years battling to do another part. He said, total 23 years. He said, but the lessons he learned in that struggle are part of what makes him who he is today. So when you are going through things, it's for a purpose. If you spend too much time on billionaire level, God wants to take you to billionaire level. He must give you billionaire problem. Hello? So some of us know what we are going through. Why you, you are thinking, we know that it's the making of a billionaire. To enter in, where that billion say, we just kick out. Just sit down. So it's the pathway to greatness. So read, please. Read. Number two, it inspires and motivates. Let me do three, I will close because of time. It inspires and motivates. As an author, I have loads of testimonials of how my book has motivated and inspired people to do great things. My relationship books are being used in different churches all over the world as marriage training curriculum. 
the school of money book is being used in many churches all over the world. All over the world. When in Abuja, we did a pastor's um, meeting, paid event. The pastors came, and one of them was saying, say, sir, I have never met you, but it's your book we have been using every Sunday. I have a special school of, I even call it school of money, that I hope it's not a crime. Hope this one you are talking, hope now that I've met you, am I supposed to take permission because we've been doing this since last year? Every Sunday we just go chapter by chapter. And there are many churches like that. Hello? So what does it do? It inspires you. It's, there are books you read, you just get inspired. Ah, ah, if it can happen for this person, it can happen for me. You just get motivated. I can do it. So that's one of the reasons why you need to read, so that you can continue to inspire yourself. Because this world is full of bad news. Carry newspaper, bad news. Watch the television news, bad news. It will depress you. So you need some dose of good news. Number three, it informs and educates you. It informs and educates you. The entire educational system is based on what? Reading, writing, and arithmetic. The entire educational system is based on what? Reading, writing, and arithmetic. So when you begin to read, we're going to stop there today, continue in two weeks now. When you begin to read, it does what? It not only inspires and motivates you, it does what? It educates, educates you. You become educated. A lot of people are not educated. A lot of people are not enlightened. We are naive in different areas. And let me tell you something. Just reading a book can give you an information that can bring transformation into your life and make things easy for you. And you just say, I didn't know this one. No. I didn't know this one. No. I'm telling you. And I tell you this story just to let you know how frustrating it can be when you lack knowledge. When this email thing starts, I did not know that, you know, in email, you have the address of the person you are sending it to, then you have CC, the people you can copy, then you have BCC, where you can blind copy people. I didn't understand that one. So, when I want to send email to 200 people, guess what I will do? I will send to one, I will pick it again, I will type the second one, so sometimes I'm on email for three hours. Send me one email to 200 people. And I thought I was very hardworking. Why? Because knowledge was limited. Then one day, I was reading a book. And the book was talking about all this. So you can just do this. That some people, they will just be writing. And they will be doing click one, click three. That you can just blind copy. And then you do, ah. So I'm like, which one is blind copy? So the good thing about the book is the guy now put the picture there. Put the picture. So I said, ah. It's like, ah, I've seen this thing before. So it's this, this it means. And now open. I said, okay, copy, okay. Ah, okay. I press, ah, this is okay. So if I do, I said, that's how deliverance came. Why? Because I read a book. What bondage are you in that a book will set you free from? Every head bow in Jesus' name.